Joining me now, Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for having me. Is this, is this that moment that Reagan was describing back then? It is. It is because if we're not willing to law, draw a line in the sand on Obamacare, what issue are we willing to do that on? I can't think of a single thing that's affecting our economy negative, negatively more than Obamacare is right now. This is not about shutting down the government, as our opponents claim. This is very simple. This is about whether we're going to continue to pour money into a program that is basically eviscerating the American economy. It is forcing people to go from full-time work to part-time work. It's costing people the health insurance that they have and they're happy with. It's costing them their existing relationships with the doctor that's been seeing them for years. It's hurting businesses from growing. I mean, this is just, it's so damaging that even the employees union for the IRS, the very people in charge of enforcing this law, are begging to be let out from under this law. This is a critical moment. And for my fellow Republicans, I respect them all. But look, if we're not willing to fight on this issue, what issue are we willing to fight on? I, I, I kind of feel the same way as you do about it, Senator. Um, Senator Coburn, by saying it's not a, an achievable strategy, it just wouldn't work, I think part of his remarks marks were dealing with the fact that the continuing resolution, some of this spending would be mandatory. As a matter of fact, a significant portion and only a small percentage of Obamacare funding would be discretionary. Is there a way around that? There is. If the House, would, the House needs to pass a short-term budget that has attached to it the bill to defund Obamacare in its totality. Now, the argument he would make and others is that Harry Reid and the Senate Democrats will never go for that. But the reality of it is that once that bill comes over, we're not gonna, we shouldn't go for any budget that doesn't defund Obamacare. And then the only budget out there for us to consider would be the one that came over from the House. Beyond that, I would say to you that as part of our continuing resolution, we can defund, for example, setting up the exchanges. We can defund the additional IRS workers. There's a lot we can do, but at the end of the day, how can I go back to Florida and my fellow colleagues go back to their home state and look at people with a straight face and say, we did everything we could to keep this law from hurting you? How can we say that to them if we vote for a budget that funds this? And that's the fundamental choice before us. Well, Mike Lee described it on this very program. He said, this is not about a government shutdown because our debt, our obligations, Social Security, our military, everything would be funded except this. So That's right. at that point, if there's a government shutdown, who would be responsible? Well, the one who's threatening to shut down the government is the president and his Democratic allies. What they're basically saying is, unless the budget funds Obamacare, they won't support it. They're basically saying that unless we fund Obamacare, they are willing to shut down the government. And I would submit to you that Obamacare is not more important than our country. Obamacare is not more important than our economy. And it's their insistence on continuing to pour money into this broken and failed experiment that is threatening a government shutdown, not us. All right, I, Karl Rove was on the program last night, and, and he said it was the worst law that he's seen in our lifetime, meaning the Obamacare law. And he also pointed out something that I've mentioned a lot, that is predicated on lies. But he talked about the sh this strategy versus he would rather use an alternative strategy. What is your reaction to that? Because I don't know what the alternative strategy could be. Well, look, we're always open-minded on alternative strategies that would work better, but right now there isn't any. Right now, the only strategy that I know of with regards to Obamacare is ours in terms of confronting this and using this opportunity in September to defund this horrible law and the impact it's going to have. And I would say this to you, Sean, this is not about Republicans versus Democrats anymore. This is hurting all Americans. When you have labor unions coming out against this, when you have the union for the IRS workers coming out against this, when you have the White House sending uh, briefers up to Capitol Hill to calm down nervous nervous Democrats, you realize how much this law is already hurting and how much more it's going to hurt our country after October 1st. Look, for me, this is the last best chance. We have to do this. If we don't at least try to do this, the impact on this is going to have on our economy is you know, some of it's going to just be irreversible. Well, and, and it's costing billions. The president already got rid of the employer mandate or delayed it for a year. That's costing $12 billion I read. That's a just, lot of just money. Just think about Think about the people that have health insurance now and they're happy with it. They're going to lose that health insurance. They have a doctor they've been seeing for the last 15 or 20 years. They won't be able to keep going to that doctor. Think of working class Americans who right now are working 40 hours a week that because of Obamacare are going to be cut back to 29 hours a week. Think about the small businesses that want to expand and grow but are afraid to do so because it would trigger the Obamacare mandate. I've met these people. I've talked to these people. These are not billionaires. These are not
not millionaires. These are hardworking class Americans who are on the verge of being punished because, as you said, this law was built on broken promises and promises it continues to break well, every single look, day. And look at Sarah Murnahan, who uh, didn't get a waiver from Kathleen Sebelius, which was a death sentence, but for a, a judge uh, intervening in that case. Uh, let me ask you this, Senator. Since, since the immigration bill was passed, Polls have shown your support among Tea Party members and conservatives have gone down considerably. You've taken a big hit uh, in terms of your popularity because of it. Some people have remained very angry with you about it. What is your reaction to that? Well, I didn't do it for politics for obvious reasons, as you're just outlining now. A lot of people are upset about it. I did it because I thought it's important for this country to solve this problem. As I've described to you earlier, if I came on this show and told you that my immigration plan was to allow 11 million people to stay here illegally, we weren't going to give them any legalization, but we weren't going to deport them. Depending on where they work, they may or may not have to pay taxes. They're not going to get federal benefits, but if they show up at the emergency room, they'll get free medical care. Um, if I, if I, that we're not going to do anything else for the border or anything on E-Verify. If I told you that was my plan, you would say, well, that's a bad plan. Well, I'm saying to you, that's what we have today. That's what's going to stay in place if we don't do something. And so my hope continues to be that we can fix this problem. Obviously, I felt that in the Senate we had to get the process started. We did the best we could. Certainly the bill isn't perfect, um, but, but I think it was a good way to start this process. I hope that conservatives in the House will improve upon it, and I think they deserve the space and the time to do it in a way they can support. And I hope eventually we'll solve this problem. Look, it's not the most important issue facing America. Obamacare is more important, for example. But mm -hmm. it is an important issue, and if we can solve it, we should try to. If the House decides to do this incrementally where they would first secure the borders first, which right. I think is the most important thing to do, and we should be doing it anyway, regardless of what else happens. That's and let's right. say they, they decide after the borders are secured and verified secured that they would allow legalization, but not citizenship, because people didn't respect our laws and sovereignty. Could you support that? Well, first of all, I've always supported the incremental approach. It was my preferred approach. It's not the direction the Senate wanted to go, but if it was up to only me, that's the direction we would have gone because I think you get a better product as a result of that. What you've outlined is complicated because the problem is that if you're going to legalize people but you're never going to allow them to ever access citizenship even 20 or 30 years from now, the problem with that is you've just replaced one immigration issue with another immigration issue. In the long term, I think that position remains unattainable, un 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 unmaintainable. I think you're just going to trigger a whole new debate on, on immigration reform all over again. My preference would be to deal with this issue in a way that, that actually not just has border security, but 40% of our illegal immigration are people that are overstaying their visas. You have to have a system to track them. And just today we saw a report that there's a million people here from abroad. We don't know, we where, don't they know where they are. That's got to be improved. So we've got to do it all. All right, Senator, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Sean.